finally my Barbie can wash her clothes. Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you how to make a miniature washing machine for your dolls using, can you guess it, card suck. This little washing machine is a great addition to your dollhouse bathroom and as always, I've provided a free printable template for you to download and follow along with. You'll find the link in the video, so now let's get started. We're gonna begin by making the base structure of the washing machine. For the front, cut this part of the template. You can use mat board, cheap board, MDF, or even just cardstock from old packagings. Depending on what material you're using, you may need to stack several layers together until you get to a thickness of approximately 3 millimeters. If you're using my free principle template, I would suggest using a circle cutter like one of these to cut the center of a template, as it is a fairly inexpensive tool and it makes cutting precise circles a lot easier. Also, don't throw away these cardstock circles just yet they're going to come in handy later on. Repeat the same process to make the back, top, and sides of the structure. At this point, we can begin to assemble the base structure by attaching the top part to the back, and then glue the left and right sides. Before we can glue the front element in place, we'll have to create the drum of our miniature washing machine. Cut this part of the template into metallic cardstock. If you don't have any at hand, you can use regular cardstock and glue it to a piece of kitchen foil or metallic gift wrap. Stack the three elements on top of each other, like this. Then fold all the tabs toward the front. This is where those cardstock circles we set aside earlier will be super useful. And just a little tip, if you're using my free printable template, I suggest using an awl to pierce this little hole at the center. Finally, cut this part of the template, and if you want to go the extra mile, you can use a black marker to give the surface this sort of cheese grater texture, I don't have a better word for it. Roll the cardstock against a pen or the handle of a paintbrush to give it a somewhat curved shape. Then glue the tab at the end to create a little tube. Attach the part we prepared earlier to its back. Now cut this part of the template, fold the sides and glue them to create this sort of Toblerone shape thingy. And yeah, all my metaphors are somehow food related. Anyway, make three of these and glue them to the tube. Next, cut this part into cardstock twice. Fold the sides and glue the tabs to connect the two elements creating this sort of open box. Then cut this other part, fold the tabs and glue it to the back of the box we just made. To connect these two pieces and allow the drum to rotate, we'll need a paper fastener like this. If possible, use a silver one to match the color of the drum, but if you don't have a silver one available, you can simply color it with grey or silver paints. Finally, cut this part of the template in grey or black cardstock. Fold the tabs and glue it to the front of the drum to create a door seal. At this point, we can attach the drum to the front of our miniature washing machine. Next, cut this part of the template, fold the sides and glue the tab. Create two identical pieces and attach them to the bottom of the drum. Lastly, glue the front panel to the rest of the washing machine structure. To give our laundry machine a lacquered finish, you can either paint and varnish it, or just like I showed you in my miniature bathtub tutorial, you can cover the sides of the structure with a shiny material like glossy photo paper, white plastic sheets, or even just regular paper covered in clear tape. Now that the basic structure is ready, we can begin to add some details to make our miniature washing machine look more lifelike. First, cut this part of the template into cardstock and cover it with a glossy material to make it look shiny. Attach it to the front of the washing machine, then repeat these steps for this part of the template and glue it in place. Next, cut this strip out of grey or black cardstock and glue it along this edge to complete the door seal. Finally, cut this part of the template three or four times and stack the layers together until the piece is about 2mm thick. Add a final layer cut into plastic, photo paper or clear tape. Now cut this part into copy paper, color it with a black marker and cover it with clear tape or a piece of clear plastic to make it look like glass. Attach this little rectangle to the back of the plate we made earlier and lastly attach the resulting piece to the top part of the front side of your washing machine. Next, cut these tiny pieces out of cardstock Add a glossy layer and attach them to the front of the washing machine. If you want buttons that you can actually press, I suggest using foam tape if you have it, or otherwise a piece of sponge or even corrugated cardboard. 
Use a black marker to add a little design to the buttons to make them look more realistic. Now print this part, cover it with clear tape and soak it in water for a few minutes. Then carefully remove the paper layer and finally glue the resulting sticker to your washing machine's front panel. And just a quick note, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette cutting machine and you're using my digital templates, which you can find in my shop linked in the description box, the printables are included in the instructions PDF file. To make a control knob, cut this circle several times and glue the layers together. The final piece should be around 4mm thick. Once again I used photo paper to make it look shiny and to add an extra detail I drew a little arrow on the knob with a marker. At this point you can simply glue the knob in place, however if you want it to rotate you can drill a hole into both the washing machine and the knob and then connect them with a piece of metal wire or an eye pin. To make the drawer, cut this part into paper, fold the sides and attach the final piece to the hole in the upper front of your washing machine. Next, cut this part into a lightweight cardstock, fold the sides and glue the tabs. Then cut this part and fold it this way. I suggest using glue to attach these sides and ensure they stay put. Glue the resulting piece into the little drawer we made before. To make the front of the drawer, cut this part into cardstock and cover it with photo paper, clear tape or a plastic sheet. Then cut this part two or three times and glue the layers together. Top off the resulting element with a glossy layer and finally glue it over the one we cut earlier. Now print this part and just like we did for the control knot diagram, turn it into a clear sticker using duct tape and water. Attach the sticker to the front of the drawer and lastly glue the front and the body of the drawer together. Let's move on to the door. Cut this part of the template into cardstock two or three times and glue the layers together. Repeat the same process for this part and cover it with a glossy material to make it look shiny. Finally cut this part once and once again add a shiny layer to it. Assemble these three elements together this way. Now to make the plexiglass part of the door you have two options. The simplest way is to glue this cardstock frame to a piece of clear plastic. However real washing machine doors aren't flat. To make a more realistic door, you'll need a vacuum former. Making one from scratch may sound daunting, but it's actually quite straightforward. You'll only need a small box, a vacuum cleaner and a wood or MDF panel with holes drilled into it. For this technique to work, you'll also need a picture frame, some clips and a sheet of clear plastic from used packagings. Use the clips to attach the plastic sheet to the frame. And make sure it's tight, kinda like the head of a tamarind if that makes sense. You'll also need something to heat the plastic, like a heat gun or preferably a small hot plate. I advise using gloves since the plastic can get quite warm and we don't want to burn our fingers, do we? Lastly, you'll need something to use as a mold, like a small container or a cap. You can even make a mold yourself from cardstock or polymer clay. When everything's ready, put the mold on the vacuum former, turn on your vacuum cleaner and heat the plastic. When it feels very soft to the touch, quickly press it against the mold. If everything went right, you should end up with something like this. And I'm not gonna lie, it may take a few attempts before you get a good result. Cut away the excess plastic and glue the resulting piece to the cardstock frame we made earlier. Now cut this part into photo paper, white plastic or any other shiny material and glue it on top of the plastic window. Next, cut this part into metallic cardstock and fold it along the dash line. Glue the bigger half to the inner side of the door, like this. Then cut this part into cardstock twice and glue it to the inner side of the laundry machine's door. Lastly, take a mini magnet and glue it to the inner side of the door. Attach the door to the washing machine's body, then glue another magnet or something metallic like a staple to keep the door shut. If you don't have a magnet, you can use double-sided tape or glue putty instead. And with that, our miniature washing machine is complete. As promised, here's the link to the free printable template. And if you're interested in the SVG and Silhouette Studio files, there is a link to my shop in the description box. If you want to find out how to make a miniature bathroom for your dolls from scratch, I suggest watching this playlist next. And this is all for today's video. Until next time, bye!